Are you crazy? Where do you live? Are you like how? Three dollars? Is the $12 pint of ice cream worth the money or not? Guys, today we're going to be reacting to this video to see whether they're the real deal or not. To see whether it's something that we can learn from. Something that is a fad. Make sure you guys keep watching. Hello friends, my name is Wilson, your friend in helping you build a thriving small business and a profitable food business. If you guys enjoy these reaction videos, make sure you guys smash that like button. It shows us this is the type of content you enjoy. So then that way we can make more of these for you. Now, without further ado, let's dive right in. This is a $1,500 bowl of ice cream. It's garnished with black truffle dark chocolate, hibiscus champagne sauce, and edible gold. But this isn't about that. <laughs> This ice cream is nearly $10 a pint. Wait a second, I'm so lost. What just happened? I was about to binge on this $1,500 tub of ice cream and it turned into this. What is going on? Pint. This one's $12 and this one, $20. We've come a long way from the days of Ben and & Jerry's and haagen taking center stage. Guys, I'm not sure if you guys know that ice cream, around 40 to 50% of the ice cream itself is air. So that's the reason why a lot of ice cream, it's, there's not much texture to it. It's very airy, it's very bubbly, because we're eating air. And that's the reason why some ice cream, it is at a cost of only four to five dollars and others are more expensive because it has higher density. It, it requires a little bit more milk, more cream, and more ingredients. That's the reason why all the big companies, they are making bank selling you air. In the premium ice cream aisle. Innovative flavor evolutions of made-from-scratch mix-ins and ooey-gooey centers could be the culprit. But that's just one factor. So how did ice cream get so expensive? Ice cream is the most popular- So this is a video about how this ice cream is becoming so expensive. I didn't know. This is a really weird title. For a $12 pint of ice cream, is it worth the money? That, that doesn't really match what I'm watching. Popular frozen dessert in the US with the average American consuming more than 23 pounds each year. Today, the ice cream industry is worth over $61 billion globally and expected to grow another 13% over the next five years. American companies haagen and Ben & Jerry's led the way in premium ice cream since the 1960s and 70s. But since then, consumer taste buds and preferences have changed, sparking a flavor revolution of unique ingredients and lower calorie options. In 2017, healthy ice cream newcomer Halo Top rose to be the top-selling pint in the U.S. with $347 million in sales, surpassing both Ben & Jerry's and haagen proving these innovative super premium concepts are real contenders. The biggest challenge that the premium ice cream market has is competition. Now there's so many. Again, if you go back 20 or 30 years, there was Ben & Jerry's and haagen -Dazs. It was an easy choice. And the increase in competition is making key ingredients a lot more expensive. The price of milk. Guys, I'm just hopping in to share with you guys something super important and super time sensitive. If you're looking into starting a food business, but you just don't know where to start, or you just don't know where to start because you don't have the experience in doing so, you could end up making some very costly mistakes that could cost you tens of thousands of dollars. Or you focusing on the wrong things, draining your time and resource and money. And that's the reason why I created a free masterclass where I share with you how you can leverage Instagram in order for you to build your food business, whether it is a cloud kitchen operation, whether it's a home bakery, whether it is a food truck. This contains all the mistakes and learnings that I have encountered in my decade plus experience. These are things that I wish I had known when I first started. So if you guys are interested, then definitely check it out in the link below and enter through the free live masterclass. That's actually a really good point out here. Before we talk about the ingredient cost, with any types of ice cream, nowadays the flavor profile is so different because we are so much more aware of what we're putting in our bodies. So if there are any brands out there that is not willing to innovate, not willing to really play with what the trend is, actually not, it's not even a trend anymore. It's a lifestyle for a lot of people. They count their calories, they count what they're intaking. You cannot feed people junk anymore, unfortunately. It just doesn't work that way anymore. So I definitely see the rise of being able to 
really focus on the ingredient uh, as, as, as these brands develop. Now, the second problem is the ingredient cost, guys. Ingredient cost is something that is <laughs> something that we just cannot neglect nowadays because first of all, inflation is gonna be a huge problem. Cost of goods sold is gonna go up. Labor shortage is a huge and a real issue that's going on. That's gonna drive the price up. And on top of that, the logistical problem of getting your ingredients to your destination, that itself is posing as a really big problem. These three things adding up, the ingredient cost is definitely going to go up. That means your cost that you're selling it at is going to be up much higher as well. Milk has increased 12% nationally in 2019 alone, and vanilla has surpassed the price of silver at $600 per kilo. The other thing that's happening is ice cream companies are cleaning up their ingredients. So as a result, all the ingredient costs have gone up as well. Let's meet some of the key players in this ultra premium space starting with a beloved New York favorite, Ample Hills, a company that makes all their ingredients from scratch and boasts being just as much a bakery as they are an ice cream factory, which they say justifies their higher price tax. So you know in Ratatouille, when the evil food critic gets a taste of the Ratatouille and gets transported back into his childhood, that's what we're doing with our ice cream. And that time machine, that's why we feel like that price is uh, worth $8.99. I like that. I like that. What they have done is to be able to attach their food item to an emotion. That itself is priceless because how can you put a price to all the good times that you have as a kid? The innocence, the times of stress-freeness. How can you put a price on that? That itself is priceless. I would pay hundreds of dollars for it, let alone just nine bucks for a cup of ice cream. Take my money, smart entrepreneurs. In Philadelphia, Little Baby's ice cream has been a smash hit since its founding in 2011. Known for its unconventional approach to flavors, which he sometimes comes up with on a whim, like Earl Grey Sriracha. One night I couldn't sleep. I was up in my kitchen just fooling around making ice cream. I was creating an Earl Grey base and just as kind of a gag on myself, I squirted in some Sriracha hot sauce. I threw it in the freezer and I woke up the next day and it was absolutely delicious. And this one? chocolate pomegranate and wheatgrass. And these wacky flavors have been a hit. Pretty good? Yeah, good. Okay, guys, just because they, they've done this and it's a success doesn't mean that it's gonna be a success at where you are. You need to understand who it is that you're catering your experience to. Not a lot of people would like these wacky flavors. You need to make sure that the people that you're serving, you have enough of a demographic for it, okay? So I, I don't know, in Vancouver, I don't think that would be too popular. I can only think of one ice cream place in Vancouver that has all these types of wacky flavors and still exist. And they are a old, old brand. Um, but moving forward, I don't feel like that these would be super popular, I don't know. It's delicious. In 2018, Little Baby's $11,000 worth of seed money grew to the opening of its sixth store and over $1 million in revenue. From the outset, we've always only been interested in being different because we're not going to make a better, cheaper chocolate ice cream than Hagen does. Then there's the farm to table. That is the reason why they are successful is because they have identified themselves as a weird, wacky, unique flavor that caters to a very specific type of people. Not being afraid to own it and being understand where they stand in the marketplace is really why they are successful. So, I mean, it's good for them. They serve to people liking wacky tastes brands like Jenny's Splendid Ice Creams, who works with local farmers to source ingredients and add those finishing touches to specialty mix-ins. We're working with uh, dozens of actual makers, growers, producers. It can take a hundred people or more to bring one ice cream to life. So what's the most you would pay for an ultra premium pint? No more than five dollars. If it's good stuff, uh... I'd pay like three dollars for a pint of ice cream. Are you crazy? Where do you live? Are you... like how? Three dollars? Oh my god. Probably around like four or five dollars. Probably about ten dollars. Twelve dollars is a bit much. Oh god, never pay twelve dollars for a pint. That is ridiculous, dude. This guy is so serious. <laughs> oh my goodness. Do you guys know for a proper tub of ice cream, the cost with the good ingredients, good real ingredients, guys. I'm not talking about like fluffy air that people inject into ice cream, those, those cheap kind. No, I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about good quality ice cream that uses seasonal ingredients and whatnot, the cost of that alone. 
artisanal grade, okay? Not we're talking not, not talking about ma mass pr production. Cost alone is around four to five dollars. So how can you expect people to make money if you're only willing to pay three dollars for a pint? Are you crazy? You not do that. But one of the biggest factors driving the price of ice cream, air, or rather, the lack thereof. All ice cream has air in it. It's really the secret ingredient. So if you hold a pint of Ample Hills or, or Jenny's or Ben and Jerry's, you can feel the difference of it because our ice cream has less air in it. There's more there there. And that, of course, costs a lot more money than selling people air. Some ice cream makers incorporate air to keep prices low. You can put more air into it. It's as if I know what this video is all about. It's as if I know. It isn't always a bad thing um, to make it less expensive. We've also come a long way from vanilla ice cream days. Artisanal, homemade, handmade, top dollar ingredients are creating vibrant, Instagrammable trends. And some brands are hopping on board to get more than a little creative with ingredients. So what's next for ultra premium ice cream? It's hard to say if we've hit peak prices or if younger generations in particular will continue to pay top dollar. When we look at Generation Z and we look at millennials, what they want is they want something unique, they want clean labels, and they're willing to pay. I actually don't love the idea that our ice cream is, is, is expensive. The last thing that I want to do is be known for, you know, the you know, $25 pint of ice cream or, or, or whatever. To me, that's almost a gimmick in itself. So whether it's freshly baked mixins or one-of-a-kind concoctions, the demand for ultra-premium ice cream doesn't seem to be backing down anytime soon. We're gonna do not think so. I do not think so because as prices of all ingredients goes up, I think that there is often a marketplace for good quality ice cream because at the end of the day, like I was sharing with you guys, ice cream is not just for the taste. Okay, ice cream is also attached to an emotion. Emotion of when you were a kid, the happiness, all these kind of things. That's the reason why when people are really, really happy, what did they do? They celebrate eating ice cream. When people are sad, what do they do? They binge watch TV and what did they do? They eat ice cream. A lot of these things, emotional environment or emotional milestones in our lives, we attach it to ice cream. And which is the reason why I think that yeah, it's worth the money. I think it's worth the money because we're not selling ice cream, we're selling an emotion. And whether this video is a good deal, real deal or not, I think this video is a real deal because it shows us different spectrum of the ice cream industry. So then that way we understand that, hey, as long as we're willing to find a niche, find a voice, find a position in the marketplace and really double down, whether it's wacky flavors, whether it's uh, wholesome ingredients, whether it is just selling air, as long as we find a position in the marketplace, being able to own that position is what would make us successful. So definitely guys, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys do, all you have to do is that smash that like button, show us that this is the type of content you enjoy. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video.